Well, let, let's let's see what the problem is. So my phone has been on airplane mode. I'm going to unlock it. I'm going to take a picture of Lex Fridman. Now, if I can, I'm going to tweet that picture out. Great. But here's the weird part about it. Yeah. Um, that picture sitting with <laughs> Lex today. This, 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 ladies and gentlemen, is how the sausage is made. Okay. In so doing. Yes. I have just sent um, a picture of you and a tiny piece of text all over the planet that has arrived at, if statistics tell the truth, just under half a million different accounts. Mm -hmm. And then more from sharing and so on. And we have, well, but in some of those accounts are dead. We don't really know how many places it went. Yeah. But the key issue with that tweet is that that is a non-local phenomenon. Yes. So I just broadcasted to an entire planet. Somebody in Uganda is reading that at the same time as somebody in Uruguay. Yeah. There is no known solution to have so many people with the ability to communicate non-locally because locality was part of the implicit nature of speech inside of the constitution. Friction, locality, there were all sorts of other aspects to speech. So if you think about speech as a bundle. Mm -hmm. I like this. <laughs> <laughs> then it got unbundled. And some of those aspects that we were naturally counting on to retard uh, the impact of speech aren't present. And we don't have the courage to say, I wonder if the First Amendment really applies in the modern era in the same way, or we have to work through an abstraction. Either we probably have to amend the Constitution, or we have to abstract it properly. And that issue is not something we're facing up to. I watch us constantly look backwards yeah. We don't seem to try to come up with new ideas and new theories. Nobody really imagines that we're going to be able to wisely amend the Constitution anymore in the inside of the United States. Many people abroad will say, why are these guys talking about the U.S.? It's a U.S.-centric program. Well, that's because nobody knows where this program lives. The fact, by the way, that you and I happen to be in a physical place together mm -hmm. is also bizarre. It could be anywhere. It doesn't really matter that it happens to be here. So the difference between logical, between physical, local, non-local, frictional, non-frictional, it's the same thing with uh, firearms. Uh, nobody imagined that the Gatling gun uh, was going to be present when you had to reload a musket. And that's fascinating to think about. I mean, you, you're exactly right that the nature of this particular freedom that seems so foundational to the to this nation to what made this nation great and perhaps much of the world that is great made it great is changing completely. Can we try to reason through how the idea of freedom of speech is to be changed? I mean, I guess I'm struggling. It feels really wrong, perhaps because I wasn't paying attention to it. It feels really wrong to ban Donald Trump uh, from Twitter, to, to ban not just the president, that's really wrong to me, but this particular human for being uh, divisive. But then when, when there is an incitement of violence, th that is an overused claim, but perhaps there was uh, actual uh, brewing of local violence happening. So one of the things I know was happening on Parlor is people were uh, scheduling meetings together in physical space. So you're now going, going back from this dynamic, social, large scale, people from Uganda, people from all over the world being able to communicate, you're now mapping that into now back meeting in the physical space that is uh, similar to what the founding oh, but of this the, nation was. the violence was were digital, if ransomware suddenly was unleashed. True. Um, True. The key issue is the True. abstractions. So what was freedom of speech as a bundle? And now it's... And then how do we abstract the bundle into the digital era? Do you think we just need to raise the question and talk about it? Do you have do you have ideas? Because well, sure, I have ideas. But the key point is, is that I'm not even welcome in mainstream media. 
Jesus. I've never seen you on mainstream media. Do you do mainstream media? No. So we we exist in part of an alternate universe because the mainstream media is trying to have a coherent story, which I, I've called the gated institutional narrative. Mm -hmm. And the institutions pretend that they plug their fingers uh, in their ears and pretend that nothing exists outside of MSNBC talking to CNN about what was in the New York Times uh, as covered by the Washington Post. And so that's effectively like a professional wrestling promotion where they, you know, the Undertaker faces off against Hulk Hogan and Rowdy Roddy Piper. Okay, well, that's very different than MMA. Mm 